Now watch Peter B's reply to Soludo at the Lagos Business School. The difference is clear. Peter B is in a different class altogether. He is miles ahead of Soludo. Judge for yourself. Watch the video. Excellent. Last question. I thought uh, we're, we're, I thought I left this question and it went back to the let me let me okay, let me be factual. I'm sure you're talking about co uh, comments from my very respectable DSC elder brother Saludo. You know, that's the uh, I absolutely have come a long way. My brother is my friend. And he's the governor of my state. And as governor of my state, I pray for him to do very well and everything. And all that, and we have to support him. It's very important that we do that. He has his own opinions. His opinion might not be the opinion of people of other places, it might not be the opinion of Southeast or Nigerians. But he has to respect his opinion because it's his opinion. And he's a respected person as far as I'm concerned. And it's by government. But in a clarification so that people can understand. The investment I did in Anambra State was, before I talk about investment, the only measure of development while I was governor was Millennium Development Goals. It is Millennium Development Goals that India, China, Vietnam may strip into their development agenda. For China, they used it to pull 439 million people out of poverty between the year 2000 and year 2015. India, within this period, put 276 million out of poverty. And Vietnam did almost 40 to 50 million out of poverty. And these are records we can check. I, I became governor in 2006, was impeached, end of 2006, came back, one of my greatest supporters today, is a former one of my supporters, the next president of Nigeria. One of the reasons why he's supporting me is that when they said I should give people money for not for me not to be beach, I said no, I can't pay people for doing the wrong thing. I would rather go. But I came back. So for me, the measure they started MDG in 2000, but after, I, after my impeachment. I came back in 2007, started implementing MDG. By the time Nigeria ended MDG in 2015, Anambra State was number one. The person in charge of pulling people out of poverty in Nigeria is a man called Dr. Magnus Paco. Go and ask him, I have a certificate for being number one. He's still alive. Go to Minnesota uh, Department of Statistics. I was the first governor to do statistical record of poverty. I won a prize for Father Minnesota Works for having the best road network. You can go to people in Anambra State. I was number one when I started. We are number 26 and 27 in Wayak and Neko. By the time I left, we are number one. I want to get price for help. I can go on and on and say this is what we achieved. But I said the overall measure is MDG. I was number one. The people who were doing it there was Amina, who is now in the United Nations. I was even invited to the United Nations to share my experience. And so many things are not. And collectively, the day I left office, I was not owing any contractor who have executed his job. And these are not only for any job that a contract we are awarded, but you can only pay when job is executed. I'm not owing any contractor who have executed his job. I'm not owing any supplier who has supplied anything. I'm not owing one. Examples are people like Emerson, Zenos, Computer, I paid Zenos 
We bought the highest amount of computer ever bought by a government in Africa. They are there. HP will tell you the same thing. I paid them six months off from before they supplied it to our school. I paid him also one year before I delivered any car. He can go this block and it's on tape, so you can go and verify all this. Above this, I decided from day one that we must have a savings as a as a state. And we must save at least ten percent of my total receipts by the time I left by the time I leave government. Total money I received while I was governor, and I'm still received, whether it's local government, whether it's state, whether it's uh, our local um, revenue, IGM, everything was about 500 something billion naira, out of which they are left office. We had in savings 75 billion naira. And this is how the money was shared, so that you know which one is mentioned. Only one that is uh, the money we save is a we save in dollar. In three banks in Nigeria, some of you are working in those banks. Access Bank, Diamond Bank, and Security Bank. In each of these banks, I had a saving of fifty million dollars. Dollars, this and all. And they were invested at, a, at at least interest of six and a half percent. If you calculate it today, as at that time, it was a print of 25 billion, because there were 160 something, 160. If you calculate today with interest, it's about 250, at least 250 million dollars. These three banks are there. I have in each of these banks again invested at least 30 billion, so 10 billion naira in three of them, making it 30 billion. At an average interest, call it even 10 percent. If you calculate it, that money today would have been about 60 billion. Remember what I left is 75 as you calculated them. So then the third, the third one is the investment I did in various companies. NIPP, we have $59 million in it. The one that they're saying is one less is that we invested $3.5 in international breweries. International breweries is um, what you can call a global company, the part of Airbnb which is the biggest brewer in the whole world. We, have a, we had a policy while I was governor that any factory, anybody who wants to, foreign investor, who wants to invest in Anambra State, who will buy 10% of the company and under the condition that we sign an agreement with him that he will give Anambra people work to the minimum of not than 40% of the workers. They built their facility in Anambra State. That facility is there today, employing directly and indirectly over 10,000 Anambrarians, getting one of the highest revenue source for the state. Even in some of their waste, the biggest bakery we have in Anambra State collects waste from them. There's so many things that company has done in terms of helping the state, transporters, this, that, and everything. The shares was at the time being sold at 50 naira. Today, the shares is about 5 naira or so, and then maybe that was what was referred. But in all for all of what I left is less than 5%. Okay. That particular investment is less than 5%. So if you calculate what I left, I left 75 billion. If you go and sell the dollars today, even at 600, it's 150 billion. Plus 60 billion of the naira is 210 billion. Even if that one is wasted, three times what I invested is still there. When you spread your investment, some will go up, some will come down. But overall, 
the company is still there, the company is still doing well, it's still part of a global chain and everything. I needed to explain it not because I'm defending comment by my brother. My brother is a brother, I miss my brother, he's very close, so I'm very grateful for him. So of other things which I didn't succeed, God has given him opportunity to do it and succeed. For me, for me, yes, so if there's anything pending, governance is, governance will not finish. People are still going in government in America. So you stop where you stop, other people will continue from there. I don't look back. It's the governor of my state, for long as it's my senior brother, it's even more intelligent than because he's a professor and a trader. So he knows more. So he'll be able to do things better than I'm doing it. You know, I've done my little one as a trader. Now the professor is there. He will do his own as a professor. The schools that he roof, he will roof them. That's how government goes. Another person comes, do his own. But let us think about it. Finally, like I tell the people, for those of you who are, please get involved. All of us are going to tell you a good story. All of us are going to say the same thing. Though. But it's who can we trust? Even in this one, they're talking about me. Some said he kept money and he did not. Now I said, uh -uh. even in the Bible, the man said, since you know I know, why did you keep my money for seven? If everybody who has passed through Nigeria, who did not in kept money, are we going to be in problem now? We yeah. have the money to do something. At least I get the money. But in this one, I did something and I did money. Next year's election, please, I'm begging all of you, should not be based on ethnicity. Don't ever do it. You know that don't buy bread cheaper. Neither do ourselves or not as buy bread cheaper. The Southwest people don't buy bread cheaper. He wants to buy bread cheaper. Let nobody tell it about this. This is everybody suffering. Do not do it because of religion. No religion buys anything cheaper. No, there's no religion that wants to talk electricity. I say it everywhere I go. Central Mosque in London, the land was rented by the Queen. The Queen is not a Muslim. That land is worth over half a billion dollars. What? A billion dollars. He gave it to them free. If you go to Dubai, I'm a Catholic. The Catholic church in Dubai, the land and the church was built by any of Dubai. He doesn't the land, he built it. It's only here that people tell you about religion. If you know people, any church, they buy anything cheaper. Show me, I'll start going there. to buy the food. So let nobody give us the excuse. And it's not for this town. It is town of Nigeria to take back their country. So let nobody say it's town. Corrupt. Nobody is the same. I'm not. I've never claimed to be. And I don't know everything. The little I know, I've tried. You know. But if you say you can, you're not going to fight corruption, let's know where you pass through. How much did you live there? How much was missing? At least today I said we are left 150 million dollars. Left 30 million naira. Let other people come and show where they left their own. I said, go to Anambra State. If you see a piece of land allocated to P2B directly or indirectly, otherwise for anybody, come and stop campaigning. So I say I will fight corruption head on because I've explained it somewhere. I want you people who are not the employers to explain it very well. Next year, the lesson was the character we can trust. It must be based on competence, it must be based on capacity and commitment to do the right thing. And remember, this job requires physical and mental energy to do it. We don't want to do very much to do. Thank you and God bless you. What are your thoughts after watching the video? Ochu mo koko mwada. Soludo. Soludo. Change your ways. You are hurting yourself politically. Nigerians, we must not miss Peter Obi. This man is special. This man is fantastic. This man is, I can't believe he's God sent. This is our chance. Thank you very much. Stick with Okago TV. Much love, yo. I am obedient for life.